Jazakumullah khayran. We'll just allow for the question from Brixton, Brixton today. If you have any question from Brixton, please. And inshallah, we'll adjourn some of the questions to um, other class. And you have any questions from the Brixton people, put your hands up, please. Jazakumullah khayran. Sheikhna, please go ahead. Nakhla from Brixton. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, it's a wonderful talk. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. Um, I have a question regarding where this would fall. Like when it comes to um, trying to find justice for an oppressed group. When you have an oppressed group, like say, for instance, black people in the West are, are, can be seen as an oppressed group in certain circumstances. What is a lim- what are the limitations or the, the rights of this? And does that fall into or can that fall into nationalism, tribalism, that sort of thing? So you're saying, for example, that we know the fact is that the black people in the West, they have been graded as to be class two or class three, and they're not being given their full rights. Um, what is your stand as a Muslim regarding this issue? The same thing we say to the brothers. If you're going to help a black, I mean, of course you're a black, even though the helping of yours is against the haq, and you see that the black person is the one who's made the mistake, that is called fanaticism and racism uh, and nationalism. I would say call it more, more racism, this one. Um, sometimes... Uh, some of the people tackle the racism with another racism, which is not correct. Okay? So they see oppression coming to them from another race, let's say white against the black. They start teaching their children the anti-racism by racism. Accept help only for the black. Don't accept from these whites. Okay? They teach them even in movies, in movies and films and all of that. You know, you know, Teach them that you want you don't want to take anything from them, you know, you don't want any any help from them because you don't expect any help from them. You have to be together. America tried their best to kill this racism, even though there, there are some people they like it, by making what is that thing that unites America? What was it? What is it? It's no religion. Even the church itself, there's black churches and white churches. What is uniting America? An enemy. Create an enemy and let them focus that we are together against one enemy. So the best thing, for example, vulnerable one, the Muslims now. Create this 9-11, all of this, and let's focus. But they're going to run out of ammunition here. Okay, they've blown the (laughs) the two towers now. They're going to blow, I don't know what they're going to do. Even so many people now on the internet, they, they created these channels as well against everything, against Islam. But they know they're going to as well burn that hand because they people now they know what is the reality. Regardless of what you're going to do, tell us on the TV and everything. There's other channels as well on the YouTube and we can see the haqq and the truth. Nobody would believe what they're selling us. It's every, everybody's obvious. Everybody can see that is obvious. Unless it's, he doesn't want to believe it. It's just there. So... America failed. And America is going to be doing the same thing. And look what happened. And uh, there's an army now on both sides. Not talking about the real army of the American. No, no, no. An army from them. Being people given weapons and, you know, to go and fight with each other and kill one another. Well, those who live in America, they know what I'm talking about. I don't know if somebody in America at the moment could champion what I'm just saying. Please go ahead and put your hands up. Anybody you from America is listening to us? Put your hands up and tell us what's happening there in your side regarding black against white. In that, uh, in the year that passed before, I would have seen things. And you think it's not in England? Well, it will come to England. Maybe England is better. But it's going to come to England. Same thing. Okay. So, uh, what's that tower which was burnt here, uh, Omar? Abu Umar Nakhla, Abu Bilal, and Abu Umar Bilal. What was that tower that was being burnt in, in London? The tower that was burnt in London? 
ما اعرف بنت بنت ان لندن ما اعرف او جرينفيل تاور نعم يا يو ار لندن لا لا يا جرينفيل تاور جرينفيل تاور why they let it burn where were they when the people brought all this stuff to support Ramadan. no people left to take anything everybody's burnt yeah who are they being burnt the ones are the elite people yeah. <laughs> who are they there the answer is there the answer is there people they know they left it just like this subhanallah allah mustaan So it's going to come as well. You will find it. You will see it. But it's not really as bad as in America. But you're going to find it. So we as black or Muslims or Arabs or whatever, we cannot help my race because the general trend is that we are under the Hamas so we have to help our brothers regardless if they're wrong or right. That's not correct. We have to be impartial and deal with each case accordingly. Okay, let me disclose about some of things that had happened to me. I have been summoned into court regarding a, a, that I have allegedly crossed a dread traffic light. And then I crossed it, that I myself, and then after a while, the police came from after about two, three minutes or four minutes, in a bus and a big van and basically stopped me. And then they, and he said to me, did you, you know, I stopped, I don't know why you stopped me. He said, because you crossed the red traffic. I said, I didn't cross the red traffic, a traffic light. I crossed the number, 100%. Anyway, he took a picture of mine and everything. I said, he said, I've got the whole bus against you. He's got about six, seven policemen. I said, I, said, I would be glad for this, all of them. To, they could really go and make a testimony. And they need to be paying attention at the same time. And they've got like a, a, a like a, uh, like sort of, um, you know, when they put the naughty people, they've got like a mesh. You can't see properly. How can they see? I would be glad for them to see. And there's a camera as well as they're, they're hanging there. I could see that there's a camera there. I would be glad. I found that this guy is not really, either he's a racist or either he is doing his job. And he thought across the red light. Maybe from back, he, too far behind me. And he followed me after what? After, after two miles. And when he followed me, I was driving very, just a normal speed. So uh, I said, I'll go to court. And he went, the letter came and I went to court. Cut it short, it's a long story, fascinating story. I had even uh, with me, somebody who is known to you maybe, uh, Ustad Muhammad al Tarawna. he was with me. And he was witness for that story. I myself phoned a lawyer or a solicitor whom is supposed to be, I got some relationship with him. And he said to me, give it up, these, Judges, they're gonna side with the uh, police. And I prepared everything. I made my homework and I even went to the traffic light and I even said how the traffic light is because he made a claim and it's all a bit false. I made, I calculated my mathematics myself and how many miles I would be doing and how much, how can he you know, catch up with me? That means all of it are correct. But when he told me this, I closed my laptop. I said, I'm not gonna just confess that I'm guilty. Where Tarawni uh, told me, no, 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 you shouldn't be doing that. I said, no, I'm going to be. Then I was there in the to confess, basically, this is where I should, I said, be, I should be impartial here. I wanted to confess. Before I entered the room, SubhanAllah sent us another police, he was waiting for another case. And Ustad uh, Tarawni was talking to him you know, regarding my issue, and he said, he said to me, come. And the police said to me, why, why do you want to, to say that you are guilty? And you believe that you're not guilty. And I said, because, you know, they told me that it's a waste of thing and I might pay money. And uh, they said to me, you're going to be siding. The, the judge will side with the police. He said, you're wrong. Most of the cases, the judges will side against us. No. And then he said to me, are you going to make an oath that you're guilty and you're not guilty? That made me stop here. I'm going to make an oath. That I'm going to make an oath that I am guilty, but I'm not guilty. I crossed the red, but I'm not crossing the red. That's haram. So forget about all of this. So I started going my laptop again and going to my notes and everything. But I was not allowed to have the laptop with me. I had to memorize things. Allah understand. But I had to put them on the mobile of mine to show them because it's part of the evidence and how much is the per seconds. Anyway, 
This case, normally the case of this talks about 20 minutes, one, 10 minutes. Mine took about two hours. <laughs> they brought the policeman to me because we're testimony, and I brought me, and then I brought my, and I showed the thing, and there was a, 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 a the um, cleric there, and there was the judges, and there was, after two hours, they made the verdict. And I've already filled up the piece of paper to say that how much I would be paying the fine in installments. They came out, and I'm coming out. She came out inside. There's three judges and the ladies in the middle. And they said, and I'm coming to them. He said, and we found you, Mr. Abu Hajj, such as them. And they said the word. And I started, what, what, sorry, what did you say? Not guilty. I couldn't believe it. I just prostrated in the court in front of them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I said to them, I had to say something. I was about to say I'm guilty. Tell I met a policeman outside. And uh, he told me such and such. And I had some words that you judges, you're not for siding with the police. But now I know that in this country, there is justice. Thank you very much for that. And then when I was going out, the cleric, she said to me, oh, do you want to file uh, compensation? She said, I said, I'm going to give it for the sake of Allah. No compensation. Bye-bye. And me and Tarana left. Just to show you that I had to be as well, yani, I have to be just and fair. I can't say all British are to be like that man. Good morning. Now, good morning. I mean, arrogant. You didn't even look at me. I can't call you all British like him. I cannot. This is not, this is haram. All of them are racist. All of them, you can't say that. And that's the problem of racism, Ya Bilal. That because of one mistake of one black or mistake of one or group of blacks or group of whites, you generalize. All the Britishers are, you know, uh, arrogant. All the black people are arrogant. All the Britishers are racist. You can't say that, Yahuwah. This is not right. Alhamdulillah.